So one of the problems with flying quads is you end up with a lot of small batteries that you need to charge. Um, so I've got in front of me six um, 1300 milliamp hour batteries. I've got three horse and batteries here and three bonker batteries here. Uh, these are 60C batteries and these are 65C batteries. Um, the C rating on them tells you how, uh, well, how much amperage you can pull out of them. Um, well, you're flying, so obviously you want to try and get that as high as you possibly can. But the problem is you still want to charge these batteries in about 1C, or you're going to start doing damage to them while you're charging them. Um, so it actually doesn't matter what the C ratings of these are, you still want to charge them at 1C. Um, now what 1C means for these is uh, you want to be putting in 1300 milliamps over an hour and these are 1300 milliamp hour batteries so you want to be putting these in at 1.3 amps basically um, so you've, you've got a choice you can either sit there and charge one battery at 1.3 amps and get him done and then move on to the next one and charge him at 1.3 amps and move on to the next one and that's one hour two hours three hours four hours five hours six hours and however many other batteries you've got um, and you can take all night charging your batteries and then go out into the field and have them all done in 20 minutes or you can parallel charge them so you can use one of these um, what these do is these allow you to um, connect the batteries in parallel um, and what that means is that it effectively makes a bigger battery um, and then you charge that bigger battery at 1C which only takes you an hour it'll actually probably only take you 30 minutes because you, you very rarely charge from completely empty and then um, stop that charge and then you pull it apart and you've got three or six charged um, 1300 milliamp hour batteries so there are some rules I guess that you need to do to um, to get this to work correctly without starting a fire um, firstly your batteries need to all be the same cell rating so the, these are all four cell batteries um, you can't mix a three cell battery in with this you can't put a five cell battery in with this you can parallel charge all of your three cells together or all of your five cells together but you can't mix and match um, the other trick is that the battery cells all need to be approximately the same voltage when you start. Um, so for that I have a battery tester. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. This battery here is four cells and it'll read 3.79, 3.78, 3.78 3.79. So all of those cells are the same. Well, all of those cells are about 3.79. Plug into the next one. And as long as all of these cells are approximately 3.79, which they should be because these, oh, that's actually a little bit high. Uh, 3.8, 3.81, 3.82. So they're all within half a volt, no, less than half a volt, sorry. They're all within 0.05 of a volt. And as long as all of these batteries check out and they've all got approximately the same cell voltage, then you're good. Um, you start to come unstuck if one of the cells is a lot lower than the others or a lot higher than the others. Because when you plug all these in together, effectively you're connecting the cells of these three batteries together. So if you call the, the if you call them cells one, two, three, and four, you'll connect all of cell one for all three batteries or all six batteries together and then all of cell two for all let's just say three for the time being all three batteries and then all of cell three for these three batteries together so the cells need to be approximately the same voltage when they start because they'll try and balance the voltage out and if there's too much of a difference between them you find that your batteries with the higher voltage drain into the batteries with the lower voltage at a very very fast rate because there's very little resistance in there and um, it's only one cell doing that in your whole battery which can 
upset the lot. Um, firstly, the one battery is being charged at way higher than 1C. And secondly, the other battery is having one cell discharge at a very, very fast rate. Um, but as long as the, the, the cells are pretty close, then that, that's not a problem. There will be a little bit to do that. Um, the other trick is you, you want to kind of keep them the same. Um, I could charge all of these batteries together. Um, there shouldn't be a problem doing that. I've got six ports on here, six batteries here. So if I plugged all six of these batteries in, um, I would effectively make a uh, 7.8 amp hour battery because that's 1.3 amps per battery. That comes out to 7.8. If I remember rightly, it's nine. Yes, um, and then I could set my charger to 7.8 amps and charge them all, and then within the uh, within however long it takes to charge them, they all get charged. So then they finish. You pull them all off, and then they will all be charged to the same level. Um, what I actually like because my charger can't supply 7.8 amps per channel. It's a dual channel charger, but I can't do 7.8 amps. Um, I charge three at a time, and then I just have to put them at 3.9 amps. Um, there's a couple of tricks connecting them. It's not particularly difficult. Connect this one first. Um, so if you're using XT60s, connect that XT60 before the balance port. You want to go one battery at a time, so that one connects in. And then you definitely want to connect the balance ports. It doesn't really matter which plug goes on which side. As long as, I'll do this one over here, as long as you connect the balance ports. Don't connect three or four batteries and then try and connect all the balance ports. That will cause you problems. Do one battery at a time, connect, connect the main plug in, and then connect the balance plug in. Um, and then it's um, probably best practice just to leave them sit there for a few minutes. I've actually got two balance boards because I've got a two channel charger. So at this point I would leave these sitting here and then I would plug these into the, the second balance board. Um, and yeah, now I just, just set the charger to um, to, li to limit it 3.9 amps, um, which is the total of all of those, until it's charge a four cell battery. It'll charge all the way up, it'll um, top them all off. I'm not going to go through that now. And then um, when it's done and it tells you that they're finished, you disconnect them basically in the reverse order that you connected them. So it doesn't matter which battery you go for, but you pull the balance cable out first and then the main plug. And then the balance cable of the next one and then the main plug. And the balance cable of the next one and then the main plug. And then they're all done. So if these were charged, these would all be at 4.2 volts a cell, and they'd all be ready to go. And it's just taking me the same length of time as it would have one battery to get all three of these done. Um, and like I said, if I if I could actually put out almost nine amps on my charger, I'd be able to charge all six of them together, and then I'd have six batteries done in the time it would normally take you to run one battery. So again, the only the only real trick is get something like one of these to test your cells. And before connecting your battery to your balance port, balance board, check the cells. If you've had one, one battery in all of this die for some reason while it's in storage, and you plug it straight into there without testing it, uh, you can end up damaging all of the other batteries. So you don't want to do that. So it's just a matter of having one of these. You notice this one didn't even beep. This one's actually broken, so it's no good for a model, but it still records the, um, the cell voltage, which is good enough. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so if you like this quick little tech video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please give it a thumbs down and tell me what I can do better. Thanks very much.